because you know she had to go into the meeting that night and give the story of it works and uh, so I I think just knowing that knowing there could have been four queens there's only one queen and it's improved my life so. You look at the humble beginnings, you come in and, you know, you have the corporate team working away, you've got Pam in the field, and you got this crazy rap thing. You know, in the former layer of this crazy rap thing, Luis Maharas come along, and, and those of you that have never heard Luis, it's fantastic. You know, I, I love, Pam always says he pronounces his words funny, and it's all always great to hear this, but Luis is a great guy. How'd you and Luis get together? Well, uh, this, this guy was a product, kind of a product, um, introducing product to different people, and that's it. Who like a broker or something. Yeah, a broker, and it introduced Pam and their group there. And So he's going to take me down to Mexico. And uh, he took Larry and I. I can't remember if Steve was on that trip or not, but I know Larry and I was on that trip. And uh, the funny thing is Larry was a football coach, so he's kind of a big guy, and myself and this other guy. And we all had luggage, and, and Luis picks us up, and like it's like a Volkswagen. And there was no... There was no trunk or anything for it, so we're in this little car with our luggage on our laps. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, all right, this guy's the CEO of this company, and um, we'll see how this goes. But, you know, we just hit it off, and really interesting, because we've become really good friends. And we did everything on a handshake back then. And both of us, Luis had uh, a time where he had a choice to make. If he was going to partner with me or maybe someone else, and, and he chose us. And um, there was a time where Luis had kind of a tough thing going on, and I was able to step in and really help Luis and his family. And I think through that, it really bonded us. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, I'm a sports guy, I like to compete and play, and Luis is um, very much an intellectual, likes to study. I think we were working on a contract here in uh, Michigan, and the Detroit Pistons were playing in the NBA Finals. And we were in a hotel, and the game was way over there. And I could see it, but I was trying not to watch, but it was killing me to finish this deal here. And I talked to Luis, talked to Luis, and it's one of the greatest blocks in history. Reggie Smith was going in to score from Indiana, and Tayshawn, Reggie, it wasn't Reggie, but Reggie, and Tayshawn blocked it from behind, and I didn't even know it. I jumped up, and I started going, no, no, no. And I was two inches from it going, yeah, yeah. And I turned and across back at the table was Luis with this horrified look of, what's this guy doing? And, uh, but, you know, today we just, we love the differences about us and who we are. I love that. I love that. Cindy, you know, and I, I love when Luis gets together. He and I had a chance with our families to travel to Spain. I think it was last year and do a tour. And I got to know him a little bit. Of course, I was asking him about the old days and talking a little bit. But, you know, obviously faith is a big part of our company. You know, the belief and knowing that it's going to work out. And how, you know, early on when you're flipping houses, you know, pants going home going, Dave, I don't know what we're doing. How did faith play a role, you know, from not only now, but from the beginning to see it through? Well, when we were flipping houses, that, that's what we used to do when we were teaching and coaching so that I could stay home with the kids, we'd flip a house. Um, so it's interesting how God used that training when we needed to be able to come up with a salary. Uh, our flipping days were over and they were. Um, and honestly, when I look at Pam and Dave and their family, super strong family structure, very attractive to us. Uh, Luis and his children are so close. You see all of his kids are involved in the company now. Um, you know our family. Folks, uh, we all believe that we're here for a greater purpose. We know we've been chosen. He's taken the simple things and doing something exceedingly abundantly more than any of us could have imagined. And that's why when you're thinking of this guy, because he just seems to never run out of ideas or dreams or stuff like that. So I, on the other hand, um, I have the gift of interceding. And I just think because I've been on my knees, could feel the Lord guiding and directing. The unknown didn't really scare me because he just always seemed to have our back. I mean, there's no way I should have been able to stay home on a teacher's salary. The most Mark ever made in teaching was 40000 a year before taxes. There's no way we should have been able to do that, but we were. And people would somehow even think, gosh, you know, 
they're always driving a new car, and we do think, a new car, we got a 10 year old car. Why do they think we're driving a new car? The Lord always just seemed to put us in the right place and provide for us. And so, He'd always done it. I wasn't going to start questioning Him. I'm sitting here thinking, those original two guys you started with, I wonder what they'd be thinking today if they were in this room. Um, they're not here, you know, but you think about their perspectives of the last 15 years. I think about Pam. I think about Louise. It'd be interesting to get everybody together and, like, do a round table and just talk and us be able to be flies on the wall and listen on that. And speaking of people, Dr. Don, that handsome man on the left, came in to be somewhere. How in the world did you and Dr. Don get together? Well, you know, it's interesting because this whole segment's on building great teams and, um, I actually had the bankers one time said that to me, you know, the company was starting to really move and the bankers said to me, you know what your skills is? And I was like, I was actually kind of wondering what it was, you know, I was like, no, what is my skill? And he said, your skill is you put great teams together. And I thought, you know, we, we do do that. And Dr. Don came from, um, I'd gone for a physical and my doctor uh, had said, you need to get on a good multivitamin. And I said, all right. Um, What's a good multivitamin? What should I take? And he says, I don't know, but you only live once. I wouldn't take a bad one. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with that. Makes sense. And uh, so, you know, I'm a Dutch guy living in Grand Rapids. I went to GNC and I'm looking at labels and I'm actually picking out by the pretty label at the time. I didn't know what to do. And, and I'm thinking, well, I won't buy the most expensive, but I won't buy the cheapest. I mean, I didn't know. And uh, so we decided at that point, we would start looking for a company that possibly we'd acquire and, and they'd have some good products and we'd get a vitamin that way. And so that's what we did. And uh, we acquired this company, their assets, and uh, took their vitamin, took the new U that came from there, another product. But really the greatest thing that came from that was meeting Dr. Dot. And Dr. Dot had been associated with that company and, and so I got to meet him. And, and uh, same thing as a lot of other people, you know, Dr. Don came and I said, well, can't pay much, but we we can, you know, let's just start building this together and see how it goes. And he started traveling with Pam and doing boot camps. And I love this message. You know, uh, I when he talked about healthier living and the 10 steps, and even myself, there was a doctor wanted to put me on a cholesterol message, and Dr. Don was saying, here's the healthy things you can do before you have to make that decision. And uh, we started doing that. It made a difference in our lives, and, and uh, he's been a really good uh, part of the team. I love it. I love it. Well, you got... You got Dr. Don, you know, sharing the nutrition message. You got Pam in the field. You got Luis making the product. You got a small team internally, but you know, a lot of people think this was you know, an overnight success. But it took five, six, seven years to start, you know, even seeing some of those things come to fruition. And you know, you had to start making a good internal team because when you start growing sales, you know, the product's got to get shipped out. The computer system's got to work. You got to have inventory. You got to have customer service and. You had to start finding some good internal executive talent to help take it to the next level. What was that like? Well, you know, that was that was interesting because, um, you know, again, things happen that, that you realize somebody else is in control. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, our executive team, Chris Burns. And um, Chris uh, was working for a pharmaceutical company. And with that pharmaceutical company, um, he's making a really good salary. He's making better than any of us working for it works including me and uh, so Chris and I had talked about our needs for IT and how we wanted to grow the company in the future and and uh, I just said wow Chris I, I can't pay that and, but he had a flex day once a week he had a flex day so for a whole year on that flex day he'd come into it works and just hang out with us and help us help see uh, develop some programs working and I'm shocked we didn't scare him away because when he first came to work for us, we needed him to set up processes. And the last thing teaching Krista and Cindy and myself processes was not going to be an easy, you know, why do we need a process to move that? Or why do, how did, back then even turn on a computer wasn't an easy deal. But here's the amazing thing with Chris. As we grew as a company, you know, I kind of had the target of when I could go to him and say, you can leave that pharmaceutical company. And in the meantime, Carla had joined the company and was doing extremely well. And now I realize I wasn't negotiating against that pharmaceutical company, I was negotiating against myself. And, and Chris, think about that. Chris could have been rewired and retired, but I needed him to rewire over here to It Works. And so I played the card 
hey, Chris, Carla's making great money, but if you don't come work with us, this would all fall apart. So we need you right now. So um, Chris came and, and uh, you know, they've been family with us ever since. Um, you know, after we made the move, other part of the uh, executive team, Don Klein, Don had been doing city and ice taxes. He owned his own tax firm and uh, in Michigan. And we started talking to Don about, you know, think about that. Somebody comes and starts talking to you. You've got a life plan. you got your own business. And someone says, why don't you sell your company and just come join our team? And, uh, you know, we did that with quite a few people. And Don talked to his wife. And, and uh, yeah, it's a big step. They've been in the same house for a long time. And they sold it, came down here, and have been a big part of we needed good help in operations, yeah. customer service, and shipping, and he came and took that over. I like that. I mean, you, we talk a lot about family networks, you know, and you know, Cindy, you probably never could think, you know what, when I grow up, I'll be a founder of a network marketing company, direct sales, <laughs> right? It's not something you really think about, but you know, when it did it, you know, your whole family really got involved. So take us back, you know, to, to those kind of things. You know, you Carl and Chris, and you know, you got Steve, Laurel, and Doug and it really is family, but in the early days when you had family involved, that can get a little chaotic sometimes. It was, but like Mark said, when Steve came, well, Laurel was a package deal. Um, I had not worked outside the home. It must have was I did some daycare, I did some cleaning of houses, but it was always me doing what was in my comfort zone. Yeah. Never being told I couldn't be home when my kids were home. Um, and Mark always supported that. So now we needed to have somebody work in shipping, and I'm organized, I have that skill, so um, I became the shipping department. Well, the funny thing is, we only ship maybe 20 packages a week, so one day a week, <laughs> I'd ship all those packages. And then eventually we got to doing enough where every day we needed to send out about 20 packages. Now that took a while, that was a big deal for us, but then Laurel would come in and help. Um, and we just kept kind of, as we grew, uh, I would fill whatever hole. We ended up keeping the shipping in Grand Rapids the entire time and when that transition happened to Florida that whole doing the thing in-house went away we gave it to the professionals but at that point we were up to about 10,000 packages a day in a pretty small area and uh, it, it was very cool to see such a group of people come together but then eventually that got handed over and then um, we started to actually have events Chris and I did the events we're not overly great party people, but we have great organizational skills. So we would figure out where to do it, and how to do it, and, and we did the events until we moved down here. And then we said, Mark, we need a real events team. And as you can see, they do a great job. Yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell them that they're out of town today, but we literally had my parents. That we, were, we started growing. And we needed help on the phone. I actually called my parents out of Tennessee to come up and for a month help us answer phones. And um, at the end of the month, I realized it was better if I paid dad to stay home than to come answer the phone. <laughs> but they literally ran the desk for us, registration at our first conferences. You know, just amazing how all family was working. Yeah, our kids at all, at some point, worked in and out of the office too. And I'll never forget when. Mark's dad tried to get Kyler to set up a union. We went, yeah. okay, it's time for him to leave. <laughs> Big GM guy, we were like, yeah. okay, we gotta do it. But, um, it, you know, family, again, it's just, it's just important to us. It keeps us close-knit. We love having families be families, not being so stressed out by the almighty dollar that you don't have any love left to give each other. And so, uh, to us, it's just crucial that that we get to do the things we're doing and being given that gift of time with each other and, and the resources to then go and do the things you want to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I think back, you know, a lot of companies, they, they staff up real quick. They, they pay the big salaries, they get the venture capital firm to come in and they, they hire all these key positions, but you guys grew grassroots, you know, person by person by person. And, you know, last month, we had, I think we had a town hall where there was 18 new corporate team members that we introduced. How long was it before you had 18 people even in the company? Uh, we probably, it was probably eight or nine years of having 18 employees yeah. before we, and now we're almost up to 180 in the corporate office these days, just here, not internationally. So it's definitely, a new, I, I now go in, I used to go in and I'd find the new people and say hi to them. Now I say, 